All right, welcome everyone. We are Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for JoJo's, JoJo's Bizarre, Bizarre Adventure, Adventure, Part 5, Episode 6. six. All right, so we've had three of the uh, of the crew mm -hmm. been already taken by yes. this uh, uh, stand user that is attacking them, and, and yeah, and, and Jorno yeah. Jorno putting himself out there. It's not delivery; it's Dio Jornos. Yeah, like, yeah, like, seriously, he served himself up, and now he's been stabbed. Yes, right through the chest, but it's not coming out the other side. It doesn't look like so. Maybe he's okay, or this is just some yeah, stability. Yeah, some, some work with his stand. Yeah, okay. but but um, Abakio or Abakio or mm -hmm. what have you uh, is going to be the one that's going to have to solve this because right. his stand apparently is very useful in this mm -hmm. type of situation, according to Bucciolati. Yep. So, all right, yeah, we have a stand encounter on our mm -hmm. hands, and let's see uh, see how they handle this. But yeah, without further ado, y'all. Let's get into this. Leone Abacchio. Leone Abacchio. Oh. Justice. Yes. Justice. 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 あんた警官じゃろ。彼らは恩知らずで要求がましく警官を。わあ。くそにも劣る悪党を命がけで捕まえても大衆のための法律は金せ。ジーズ。そいつらを寛大に保釈してしまう。わあ。お前さん、見
These stands look so cool. They will stand against the gods in yeah. battle on with their indomitable souls. Yeah. Oh, dang. I don't think I ever, like, focused on that. Fighting gold. Oh, wow. Nice. Yep, Moody Blue strikes back. So that's going to be Abakio's uh, stand. Oh, and this is just like his partner. Yeah, yeah. You're right, you're right. Oh. Alright. Crazy bastard. <laughs> <laughs> ジョルの序盤を仲間として信用するわけじゃないが、ジョルのはお前が自分を決して見捨てないってことを信用しているらしいな。あ、this Yep. Sticky fingers! Okay, okay. All Let's right. go down. But they're not there. Take you a rock can on Nakata to Kadokoka no Monokagini. Tada Kakure de Kogek Stekter in Janai. Oi, Hanga Maricon de Kuse. Okay. Okashi. Doko, Ido Stekurunda. Katane. Jordan will wait till Koto meet on their They're inside the boat. The, uh, right. the, the actual matter of the boat. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Oh, this music is epic. Oh, yeah. So what... Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love it. From five minutes ago? Wait, wait. What? Oh. It accounts for the actions of what they did five no minutes way. ago. So we can see exactly what happened. Okay. Wow. It's a, it's a detective stand. Yeah, Brilliant. It fits for him being a police officer. Yeah. Hmm. I'll try fast forwarding. Wow. Oh my God! This is wow. this is amazing. That is. That is so awesome. Huh. He's like, oh, He was pierced. Uh -oh. Okay, so the sword. <laughs> deflated him. Okay, and then he got sucked down like the pipes or something. Yeah, so he was essentially condensed. Oh, that's gross. That is that ridiculous. Is oh, no. Huh? Huh? <laughs> wow. コンドーム見てに目の Oh, okay. Awesome. Yes. Alright. <laughs> Sticky fingers! So it's still delayed. The replay hadn't caught up all the way to them. 
今そのあたりにいるそのあたりってどこだだから切り開いたそこだぜ俺のムーディーブルースは確かにそこにいる But it's not there So are they so small that he can't see it? Or they're thin enough that they're like avoiding the edge? Yeah, yeah. You know? <gasps> got to your stand. Oh, it got his stand too. Oh. 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 Oh crap! <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna do! Which is. What? 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 Avakio like tapping into the beyond. And figuring it out, like what? He's running away. Oh, oh crap! Uh -oh. The secret of his stand is. Oh, is he giving him the clue right there? Oh my gosh! It's all up to you. Crap! Just tear the whole thing apart, yeah. Yep. Kamome ga tonderu ってことはよ。もう陸が近いってことだな。Whoa. Ah ah. 待て待て待て。Ah ah ah. Ah. Oven no wa kono ore da. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. ひと言につき仲間一人殺す何て聞き返してもえどこだってあれはカモメじゃねえぜ what does that mean? He sunk the ship? He's yeah. gonna sink the ship? Alright, alright! Good! Right. Right. Yeah. Which told him. Yeah. Wait. 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 No, no way! Oh, I was not paying attention to that at all! No way! Wow. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. What? Yeah, that's that's, that's crazy! With his music? Yeah. <laughs> You're dead. Wow.
Brilliant. Amazingly done. And then the wow. spatial distortion as they reinflate while inside the ship or something. No. <laughs> Where are the others, though? Look at that. Woo! All right. Wow. Post credit scene. Post credit scene. Thank you, Rob. Wow. Feeling so horny. I can get, get you, you out of my mind. mind. Cause, Cause sex and you is all I see. I would give anything just to make, make you understand me. me. I don't give a damn about I'm nothing, nothing else. Freaking you is all I need. I, I need your body. Your body. Well, that was... That was some next level stuff. I can deflate things. I deflate the people. I also deflated another boat and wrapped it around this one. Right. So we could have noticed if we paid attention to which boat he brought on because the boat he bought was, I believe, number one. Or no, no, that's, a, that's, that's the thing. He did get number two. But it was the furthest one on the left, which means where was boat number one the whole time? So boat number one was slipped into... Uh, I guess, yeah. Or was it the other way around? It, some, so at some point. We I can know. go back and yeah. check, though. I'm actually I actually really curious about that, because that's such a small detail that it's like, oh, yeah, we could have noticed that. We would have been like, wait, 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 we're in the wrong boat, you know? Like, ah, it's so cool. All right. Oh, yeah. Hmm. What is this track? This is fantastic. Man. He throws it. Oh, he just drops it. Yeah. It's time for a life of crime. Wait, what? I thought you were talking about something completely different. All right. But wait, there's more. Wait. Oh, nice, nice. <gasps> that was cool. Yeah. <laughs> wait. So Rob delayed the. Let me see that again. Because he delayed the bit where they showcased the stand in the transition bit. Yeah, yeah. Sin Master so, Rop. Wow. Yeah. Stand name, spoiler guard. Wow. So Rop like cropped out or yeah, yeah. Or, uh -huh. or darkened out this specific bit here. Wow. And even put A on all of the things here specifically. So it just gave us a silhouette. Rop, you mad lad. That is crazy. That is so cool. And Thank then you. at the end here, he shows it. Wow. All right. Well, okay. This was an awesome stand fight, but what I loved even more about it was that the actual way that they could have solved or right. they, they, the way they solved the stand yeah. encounter was one that they totally told us about in the previous episode. Like we, we should have noticed that That's, Jacob. Well, and the thing this is, is the kind of thing where Rocky's like, ah, oh, if you're paying attention, when we do these little stand of the yeah, week yeah. two-parter kind of things here. I saw them do that. I saw the the specifications and all that stuff, and I figured that was maybe something important. I didn't notice, though, that they actually showed the boats. Right. And the Lagoon 2 was not the one most on the left. Right. And he gave him the keys for Lagoon yeah. 1. Like, like, I saw all the hints, but I didn't see the thing that's the confirmation. Right. You know, bit. like, I just wasn't looking closely, I guess. Right. But, wow. Ah, that's so wow. cool. And and leave it to JoJo's to uh, say, yeah, I can deflate things. That's cool. Mm. But in order to, you know, move around, I deflate myself, of course. Yes. But I also deflate another ship and put it over the top of the other one and then go between those two ships. Yep. And that's how I do it. Which is funny wow. because this is this is actually getting into one of the things that I said would be an interesting um, limitation of Bucciolati's stand, Sticky Fingers, which is that can he open it up, open up matter with his zipper without going all the way through it to where we get to open air again? Can he like open up and essentially dissect that wood of the mast itself and look in and see... Like, yeah. And like, you know, unzip it, unzip it, unzip it, and like go down by millimeter, millimeter. 
Although that actually is an interesting thing. Because they did this, that yeah. means that means that uh Bucciolati can go through multiple layers of something. Yes. When if he, he does it, it if he's not aware. Sense. Well, right. Well, yeah, if he's not aware, but but because, it's not but it's not just something based on contact. Right. Well, I mean, they were both pretty much in contact. It's it's, no, it's no, it was like a parallel universe effectively of the boat, you know, with with the way he had it set up. There was no way of him being able to sense that there was another boat overlaid on top of this one via just interacting with it with his zipper he had to literally see the wait we're not in lagoon one that's right well yeah yeah but but it's basically just like a very thin like impossibly thin skin that's over lagoon one. sure so it's essentially in contact you know but But it's not i know but it essentially is for the purpose of bucciolati's stand no yeah yeah right which is something which is which is very good information to know that that's how his stand works right yeah this is literally something I, I was talking about in the first time we saw his stand work was like, but then wait, is there a limitation where he can't actually stop it from going to the next point where it hits right. open air? Yeah. Like he has to go through whatever the thing is. Yeah. Like an example would be if they're going up against, they're going trying to get through something that's like six feet thick. Would his stand have to open up multiple zippers or would it just right. take longer to get through as it pierces right. through the entire you yeah. know, six foot thick, like, piece or, of concrete or if you or had, something. say, like, a train car, could he go from one end of the train car on the outside to the other end of the train car on the outside? Or could he, like, if, and if it does or doesn't work with that, then how does it work with, like, say, double paned windows or things like this, you know? Yeah. 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 It just goes all the way through it because he assumes that there's. Right. There's no contact yeah. or what have you there. I assume it's all more based on intent than a hard thing where he'll discover, like, oh, there's a hole here, so I guess we're going through here then. Sure. You well, know. and and in a way, theoretically, mm-hmm. because of the the animation for his stand uh, opening up the portals was an attack rush, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah. Theoretically, it could have actually taken two op- portal openings, and he just didn't realize it. And they're still stuck together, so they still open the same way. Who sure, knows? but then that's like, just you know. <laughs> no, no, I know, but I'm saying, really... <laughs> but but that's a that's a thing that they could have in there. But as yeah. far as Abakio's backstory, yeah, that was some that's some hardcore origin story. Yeah, like, he he had the he had the twist of being the cop that had the thing he was dealing with with corruption and not feeling like he could properly mm-hmm. be an agent of justice. Yep. Because of this world being so corrupted as it is. But instead of having it be the thing of where, ah, oh, the cops above me, they're corrupt, and I hold on to my uh-huh. pillar of justice, it's no, you ended up becoming corrupt. Yeah. You were un- unwilling to essentially hold true and hold fast to the specific ideals of your justice because you realize how muda, muda, muda it was, you know? Right. So, yeah. and, and yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. you end up leading this depressing life where he just became like you know nothing really right and it wasn't until bucciolati found him that he had a a purpose again yes and one of the things that i loved about how they showcased this year Mm -hmm. is that it wasn't that he was able to fully completely give up on what he originally held on to because if that were the case i feel like he probably would have just shot the guy right you know and then been like okay whatever cover up you know i don't need to worry about it right or he would have just from then on gone straight into crime or something like that but he started drinking he did that to basically quiet the 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 conflict inside his sure. own mind and soul right okay the fact that he wasn't yeah. able to reconcile these things and then bucciolati comes along and basically gives him that that direction right right and and he latches on but it. then they you know become criminals basically. right which is yeah so so the point mm-hmm. i'd say was make more to make is that yes i love your analysis of the drinking aspect but him not shooting the guy i think is not necessarily a thing of him holding on to justice that's him doing a, a moral thing versus just a thing of like he doesn't want to murder someone. It's a, it's a big jump between him supporting the system versus murdering. Sure, someone. and there was probably a lot of like self guilt and things like that in there, so that that way, it, this is this is the punishment that I deserve because my mistake ah sure you know, resulted yes. in the death of my partner. Right, right, exactly. Um, so it, it all felt it, exactly. It all felt justified yeah. right, in that right. regard. Because the big problem that he had with the justice system was that it didn't feel like the people that were supposed to be punished were getting punished. Right. right, right they were yeah. just going about doing, you know, their 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 thing and he couldn't do anything to stop them. Yeah, especially the ones that had the money to post bail right. for like what was it, seventy million lira on the the one where they got they got someone really important in there, mm-hmm. posted the bail, got out, 
back back out there doing their own thing again and he's just like sitting there watching this being like this isn't this doesn't work this doesn't work for me which i think is great because it sets up a character that will align with Jorno's dream. Right. Jorno's dream involves killing people like Polpo. Yes. Like, 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 like it's like to be real. The, uh-huh. the reason why he like was totally fine with killing Polpo was not because it was some kind of emotional vindictive thing. It's just that he's like, oh, you you have this belief. You you believe these people are just useless or what have you. Mm-hmm. Oh, I guess then since you don't value life, then yeah, I don't value your life either. Yep. And- since you're nothing really to me. There you go. You're out of the way. You're dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's that ends justify the means thing. But then Bucciolati comes uh-huh. in and goes, it, the ends don't justify the means. Right. Which is, that's going to be a whole set of mm-hmm. conflicts and contrasts and whatnot that they can yeah. use however much they want as this part goes on. Yeah, because there is maybe a little bit of a a little bit of a difference in the way Bucciolati sees things versus the way Giorno sees things, given that Bucciolati is sure. aware, because he's not dumb. That Jorna was the one that killed, uh, uh, killed Polpo, Polpo. Like he's he's not he's not dumb. Like when that happened, he kind of gave that look at Jorna of just like, hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So while he's not, he's maybe not certain that he did it or how he did it, definitely not. Right. It is a thing of where uh, there there could be yes. some cool moments of disagreements of how they oh. how they do things. Oh yeah. And uh, while they are. I would say definitely on board together with this idea of changing passion um, yep. from the inside and becoming capos or, or you know, uh-huh. head honchos of the yeah, whole yeah. organization. There's some there's some cool stuff that can come from there. Yeah, it was kind of interesting that the words that Bucciolati used to to sway Abacchio, um, well, okay, not the words that were used, right, to sway mm-hmm. him, because the, what he said was very impassioned. Yes, um, yes. But true. the fact that basically, ah, the... The ends don't justify the means. It's all about how you get there, right? Mm-hmm. Now let's go join a criminal organization. <laughs> like it's like, okay, was this something that happened very recently, or or was there con- additional conflict that resulted from that as Abakio needed to adjust to this new lifestyle? Mm-hmm. Like, who knows? Well, that's why I think he he did essentially throw out a lot of his um, ideas of the system, and that's why he's totally fine with being in a criminal kind of unit. Or what have you because he brings a little bit of structure to it if anything he seems like kind of the, the yeah. number two to Bucciolati's number one sure and and he probably like him personally he would keep other people in line and things like that so that the things they do aren't as extreme on the morality scale you know towards towards the bad sure um also it's kind of a fun accountability stand that he has there he can go oh, back yeah. and be like oh Yep. Are you lying? Because if you are, I'll know. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, okay, yeah, this is what we were doing. He, yeah. he kind of he kind of removes a lot of the need for trust with his stand. He can kind of just go back and check to right. see if they're, you know, legit and things like this. No. I also love that he, um, sorry, sorry, one other thing. I also love that he uh, didn't actually show Jorno his stand. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's just a little thing of like, yeah, I still don't necessarily trust right, Jorno. Right, right. So. That's kind um, of a fun thing. One of the things that I'm a little curious about, mm. I, they might have mentioned this in the episode, I can't remember. Okay. Was five minutes the maximum amount of time he could go back? Or was that just how long he decided to go back? He never said the maximum. Okay, gotcha. Because that means he could also figure out, no, <laughs> no, that, that'd take way too, that'd be ridiculous. No, no, never mind, never mind. He has probably a limit of some kind, otherwise, yeah. yeah. Well, and the fact that he only sees what the person does. He doesn't see what they were holding or anything like that. But he heard what other people were saying? Uh, so is it not only that, is it that he gets the sensory input of that person? So they felt things, tasted things, heard things? I, I don't think it's that because otherwise he would also see the things that But maybe sight is specifically and... the one that he doesn't get, you know? Because he sure. did get their hearing. Like, well, Bucciolati was like, hey, that's my voice there. Like Bucciolati specifically was like. Well, I, I think it was that he, there he knew he knew what the person that he that he read the past of, what they did in res, what they said in response, right? So I think it was more of Bucciolati saying, "Oh yeah, I asked that question," or "I." I but said that's not that. what he said, though. He said, "Okay, well, let's that's, check." That's he's like, "That's my voice right there." So then. Oh wait, no. The, so, he he also my, where it records perfectly. Okay. 
See, so he says, that kind of money. We... Yeah, that was me speaking. Yeah. Where did you hide that kind of? Um, yeah. I don't see was tacked right at the competition. I can't tell you that yet. That's, that's. It was before this, I think, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 See? Yeah, yeah. So maybe it's actually that, like, it's his stand is, is just constantly recording things or something. And then it can replay, you know, it can take the form of a person to, like, for how it displays things or something. Right, right. Maybe, maybe it is more of a literal, like, phonograph kind of stand yeah. where it's, it is more about audio than visuals. And this is just a simulated visual so that we get that. Right, like, it has the perfect recording. So when it records something, it does it perfectly. But it's not just, but, like, it might have to be something that Abakio was actually in the vicinity of, you know, or his stand was in the vicinity of. And it's constant just recording whatever. Right. It's just important to know that those that are experiencing the recording are then getting the feedback there. It is not just something getting downloaded directly into Abakio's mind or what have you. Right. This is a yes. this is a scrying thing that like also, you know, gives yep. out limited surrounded that's actually more of a probably thing of what it is. This mm -hmm. is it's probably the scrying thing where there's a limited field yeah. around it that gets inputted into the recording. Mm -hmm. But that's that's important to know that which would explain why he had to be Narancia rather than one of the others because Narancia <laughs> was a lot closer to him. That's that's true. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, yeah, we end up solving the Jeez. the the battle with yeah. someone who is a pretty competent, you know. Oh threat yeah. And genuinely could have just ended the whole story right there. Um, wow. But yeah, it's how you reach it. The end result isn't what matters. Join my team. Don't die shackled to the past. So, yeah, obviously he's a character that's, you know, filled with regret and pain from that whole situation. Mm -hmm. So you're right in that he is holding on to that past part of himself because he has regret. But in some ways, if he's going to move on and not be shackled to the past, he this might be a more of a moment of rebirth where it explains that he had to put on another persona entirely in order to justify actually being a part of the no, game. No, no, Caleb, this is JoJo's we use stands here. Oh. <laughs> but you see what I'm saying, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, we got backstory on Abakio. We did indeed. We completely removed all the other characters except Buccellati and Abakio. Yep. Basically. And it was a fantastic fight. Yeah, it was, it was a really intense mystery. I, absolutely crazy. I, I liked also that it wasn't really a typical fight. There was no battle rush, really, except right. for the part where <laughs> Bujalati tore apart the ship, essentially. Yep. It, it was more of a practical, just mystery, trying to figure out how the whole thing, uh, how the whole thing happened. Yep. So more like a proper puzzle. So. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, we've got uh, uh, this uh, this guy completely handled. Do you think he's dead though? <laughs> because oh. because because he might not be. <laughs> he might not be. Given the fact that he, like, zipped, well, you know, him, it's a portal. It's not like blood no, was no. flowing out of the wound I, or what I have think, you. I think he's he's dead. Okay. Because like, like, then I would say the only reason why he should be dead is if the head, <laughs> you know, was separated from the zipper and just went into the water. Right. Well, like, and so he just drowned. Well, eventually know? he'd suffocate. Like, you know. Well, that's the thing. Would he? Yeah, because even if he doesn't actually lose the blood that's in his head, right, if the blood stays in there somehow, right, the oxygen in the blood will get used up, and it won't get replenished. Right. So so my question is, is that do you think that he's dying or he is dead? He is dying. Okay, so he doesn't necessarily yeah, have, I mean, he hasn't hey, necessarily died this yet. This is JoJo's. We've had, this is why the head needs to be on a spike in right. a bulletproof glass case, right. right? Because otherwise, if the head's just floating around somewhere, it could find a new body. You never know. Yeah, I would yeah. say almost definitely at this point, from what they've shown, he is not dead yet. But I agree with you that unless they desire to basically just kill him immediately, yeah. like by like dropping his head into the water and just letting him drown. Right. As... Well, it, and one important thing to note is that Abakio got reinflated. We haven't seen the others yet. No, we haven't. So maybe so they'll have to like fish them out of the 
somewhere, you know. Yeah, that could be. Oh, they're floating in the water over there. Go get them. Or maybe that's proof that he's still alive because his sure. stand ability isn't. Hasn't gone away completely. Yeah, hasn't yeah. gone away completely. So that's the end of episode six, y'all. Thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction and discussion. If you want to see the next episode's reaction and discussion right now, though, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get on early access there. You can watch full length reactions there. And all this comes with Discord access, so you can chat with us and the community there about this show, about anime in general. You can get involved with the community there and talk about the manga. Uh, you can also talk with Jacob about his book that he wrote. That's right. I wrote a sci-fi novel um, called Battle Lines. It's pretty awesome. It's available on Amazon for purchase in both hardback and ebook. Link in the description. Go check it out. Yeah, so if any of that interests you, we'll see you there. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time. time.